trough of disillusionment, uh, followed by a slope of, en uh, of enlightenment, and then a plateau of productivity. And you might have your own views about where you think um, workplace learning has got to um, uh, in, your, um, in your country. And in implementing um, workplace learning, there are um, needs to address a range of uh, technical dimensions and social dimensions. Um, I want to quickly run through a, a few examples of social dimensions. Uh, firstly, learning style. Many of you may be familiar with Honey and Bumford's um, uh, classification of preferred learning styles of learners, of activists, reflectors, pragmatists, and theorists. Um, and it's likely that people who are activists or pragmatists are likely to be particularly attractive to e-learning. Um, but a challenge for the e-learning community, I think, is to um, develop uh, materials which are attractive to people whose preferred learning styles are those of the theorist or, or reflector. Otherwise, there's a danger that theorists and reflectors will, will, simply, um, will simply miss um, um, engaging with e-learning. Um, a second example there, uh, of the social dimensions, there are uh, lots of um, examples in the literature and in practice from learning from the successes and failures of previous innovations uh, about the importance of consultation involvement, resistance to change, different decision-making mechanisms of earlier adopters and laggards in the diffusion of an innovation, and all of this is relevant, a lot of this is relevant to the uptake of e-learning. Um, issues, uh, social dimension issues in the, in the implementation and uptake of e-learning in organizations um, in relation also to organizational uh, politics. Any innovation has winners and losers, so in implementing e-learning in an organization, it's helpful to identify who are going to be the winners and who are going to be the losers. Um, winners can generally take care of themselves, um, but we need to think about what's going to be the attitude of the, and actions of the losers. What are they going to do? Are they going to be reasonably positive and cooperate, or at least comply, or are they they're going to be negative? Are they going to attempt sabotage of the, uh, the innovation, of the e-learning e in the organization, try and make it not successful? Um, I've had a note telling me to wrap up quickly, so I shall uh, um, move very rapidly through these, these last um, few slides. Um, importance of addressing what's in it for me, that, that um, in implementing e-learning in the workplace, um, need to think about what is, uh, who's going to benefit from this, um, what, what's in it, what are the benefits for all parties, um, and workplace learning programs which uh, fail to address that question of benefits for all parties are unlikely to be successful. Um, I mentioned I'd come back to the role of trade unions. Um, having had a note to tell me to wrap up this quite quickly, I'd better move up very quickly through this one. Um, a, a, a recent publication by the UK Trades Union Congress called E-Learning in the Workplace, a Union Negotiation and Implementation Guide, is giving advice to trade union um, officials in negotiating for the implementation of e-learning as part of workplace learning and identifies five principles there uh, of fairness, of influence, of choice, of partnership and of membership involvement. I won't go through the details of that but that's, uh, um, that's um, uh, quite an interesting publication there's the, and there's the reference to that in the paper um, that you're getting um, from the conference. Um, uh, the importance of Further social dimension, the importance of provision of support for learners. I can skip quickly through that, I think. And uh, the importance of the need to provide evaluation evidence um, of the benefits of, of workplace learning. And the classic model of, of, of evaluation in, in, in many training organizations, the Kate Patrick model, um, and is that, is that applicable um, to evaluating e-learning? I think it probably is. Uh, finally then, conclusions. Uh, workplace learning is of increasing interest uh, internationally, including in Europe and Asia. Um, E-learning is increasingly positioned, I think, um, as not the only means of delivering workplace learning, but as one of a range of means of delivering workplace learning, and one important method for delivering workplace learning. And finally, in um, the context of increased inter international emphasis on employment-relevant skills, 
Um, the approaches adopted in different countries show uh, quite considerable differences, I think, between countries. That's not surprising because approaches to learning and skills development are obviously substantially culturally in, um, influenced. But those differences do, though, um, helpfully result in there being a, a lot of um, range of approaches and examples from which we can all learn. Um, and an opportunity at this conference is to share our experience. And I thank the organizers of the conference, um, ASEM, the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Education, Thailand Cyber University, uh, for the opportunity for us to do so. And I thank um, all of you also for sharing ideas and experience at this event. Um, thank you. Kokum Krap.